It's difficult to grow an economy when you call gay Virginians soulless and self-destructive human beings. Millions, perhaps, of Virginians who share my sincerely held beliefs. And your notion that this somehow chases business out of Virginia would be laughable if it weren't so offensive. Look, the only candidate in this race who's chased business out of Virginia is you. It's Terry, not me. So he says one thing and he does something else. Ken, I mean, you are the true Trojan horse of Virginia politics. You come in pretending to be one thing and you really are something else. I mean, both sides have been tearing down the other from day one, in part because neither candidate has a lot positive that they're able to say about themselves. Margie, you've been involved in plenty of campaigns, war of attrition campaigns. I'm sure you've been involved in them, That the, and that's what this one is. It seems is who's got, you know, they're each going to basically tear apart the other one and see what's left standing come election day. Well, McCullough clearly has a variety of advantages. He's outspending Cuccinelli. He has more money raised. Uh, he's leading in the polls, all the public polls that I've seen. Cuccinelli is not only far to the extreme on a variety of social issues, which he's not backing away from. You saw during the debate, he said, well, I feel this way. And I still feel that um, these horrible, offensive views about uh, gay people that truly do alienate businesses, donors that gave to McDonald that have now given him a call of say, it's, it doesn't matter what my views are. It's harder for me to recruit employees if the governor has these kinds of views and if these kinds of views get codified into law. So all that, plus not to mention the huge McDonald right. scandal that Cuccinelli is part of. So you take all of that, that's clear. And Michelle, that's the problem Cuccinelli has is McDonald was supposed to be a verifier. Yes, yes. And he's in enormous trouble. Uh, both he and his wife and the, all the investigations that are going on cannot possibly help Cuccinelli. And also, if you look at just Northern Virginia and, and the parts of Virginia that handed Virginia over to President Obama, I think that also makes it very Let's difficult. See, a war of attrition races means very low turnout. Yeah. I'd rather be the candidate with a with a base that will show up no matter, no what. matter what. That could be Cuccinelli's key. Both candidates came out swinging, much like the ads we've seen all summer. We've had a lot of different ads, and there are differences between the two of us. My opponent has spent most of his career on a social ideological agenda. If Terry's elected governor, we're going to have to change the state motto from Six Semper Tyrannis to Quid Pro Quo. Virginia business and jobs were the focus of this debate, but often both candidates meant business about social issues and the personal attacks that come with them. He sponsored personhood legislation that would outlaw most forms of contraception, would make the pill illegal. He's referred to gay Virginians as self-destructive and soulless human beings. The soulless comment is offensively false. The kind of personal attacks that Terry opened up his remarks with today by saying this has been going on are coming from Terry McAuliffe. No one up here has done more to protect women, which is a focus of his attacks, than I have. The intense campaign to be the next governor of Virginia is giving rise to a third party candidate. And uh, after more mudslinging in last night's debate, there's a growing sense the race could be decided by a libertarian candidate. Our Northern uh, Virginia Bureau Chief Jeff Goldberg is here to explain. Jeff? Well, Maureen, Robert Sarvis has been in the race for months now, but his name is really just starting to get some attention as he's gaining some traction in the polls. So there's really nobody other than me to, to be proud to vote for. And so that's one of the reasons why people are receptive to my message. But can he win? Sarvis thinks he has a shot, but the polls suggest otherwise. The latest poll from the Washington Post and NBC News shows Sarvis is well behind the leaders, but still at a solid 10 percent. 